We are getting reaction to the bombings from around the globe. Chinese leaders have expressed condolences, and U.S. officials have offered help for security preparations for the Winter Olympics. And joining us now with more on the bombings and some insight on what might have been the motive behind the attacks is terrorism expert David Gartenstein Ross. Thank you so much, and welcome back to the show. You know, Russia's foreign ministry did not name a specific group behind these terror attacks, but there's been a lot of speculation. What do you think, uh, or who do you think may have been behind these bombings? There's an obvious suspect that everyone's pointing to, and that's the Caucasus Emirate, which is run by Doku Umarov. Uh, there are a few reasons why they're the obvious suspect, one of which is that they've carried out a number of suicide attacks in Russia in recent years, which, like these most recent ones, focused on the mass transit systems. You had attacks on the Moscow subways, an attack at the Moscow airport. Another reason why they're an obvious suspect is because this summer, Umarov released a tape in which he was talking specifically about the Sochi Olympics as being um, something that was carried out on the graves of their ancestors. He said the Mujahideen can't allow that to occur and basically promised to disrupt it. Uh, these attacks are so obviously uh, basically geared towards the Sochi Olympics, uh, coming just six weeks before they're going to kick off, that uh, most everyone is focusing on this group. There's also been mention of, of Chechen rebels, which Russia has been um, Deal, dealing with in the past. What are your thoughts on that? Well, basically, the Caucasus Emirate is uh, you know, the, the current major force of Chechen rebels. Um, after uh, 2006, when you had a major Chechen rebel leader killed, Shamil Basayev, uh, there was basically a migration of the Jihad into both Dagestan and Ingushetia. Uh, now, Umarov himself is Chechen. You have also a lot of Dagestanis who are within the group. Uh, but when people point at Chechen rebels, those two are actually one and the same for the most part. You mentioned the Olympics. Should the international community be concerned with the Sochi Olympics and, and Russia's ability to, to keep the game safe for spectators, for the athletes? Um, should countries be concerned about sending their people over to Russia? You have two different layers of concerns. One, one is inside the uh, Olympic uh, security perimeter. And there, um, you, know, you, you haven't had a successful attack at an Olympic Games since the 1996 bombing uh, in Atlanta, and that only killed two people, injured almost 100, however. Uh, but uh, it, you know, it's going to be very, very secure uh, within the perimeter. I think the problem really is outside the perimeter. You know, people will be coming to the Games. They're going to have to get on mass transit. And it's impossible to uh, guarantee you know, any sort of, of absolute security outside the perimeter, because the more you move out a, a security perimeter, the more uh, the attackers can just move out their attack. I think a really good example of this is the Moscow attack, which I referred to before. People generally think of airports as, as being hard targets. Uh, that is, you, you have very obvious security checkpoints. And so uh, when, when uh, the um, Caucasus Emirate bombed the Moscow airport, they did it right outside the security perimeter, you know, right outside the area where security would be tightest. And, and similarly, it's the same kind of attack that I would be most worried about for these Olympics. And, and you know, we had this attack at the front of the train station where the security checkpoint was. Um, what do you think needs to be done to ensure that there isn't more attacks by Russia. We, ha we heard from Vladimir Putin. He spoke out about some plans. And several countries have already offered help to Russia. It's, there's not an easy solution. Uh, if you look at the uh, London Olympics two years ago, there also uh, was security cooperation among a number of countries. Even the U.S. was chipping in uh, to, for example, look for people who are known to be associates of terrorists or known to be terrorists. Uh, but you, for one thing, uh, providing security is extraordinarily expensive. Uh, the cost of hosting the Olympics has skyrocketed, and the Sochi Olympics are already the most expensive Olympic Games that have ever been hosted. Uh, and beside that, there's you know, so many spectators who come in, and uh, trying to uh, really ramp up security also can conversely uh, make it really difficult for the Olympics to be the kind of spectacle that you want them to be. Uh, the other thing I'll point to as well is that Russia, in, in recent years, has not been very good at any sort of security crackdown. So I wonder if one reason for having these bombings uh, you just six weeks out is, among other things, to make them ramp up security with the expectation that Russia will do so awkwardly and thus undermine itself. Well, can it, can it do this? Can it accomplish all of that in just a short amount of time? Or will Russia have to um, ask for help from other countries? I think it's it's a given that Russia is going to look for help for, from other countries, but I think that it's also a given that, you know, for the foreseeable future, basically any country host of the Olympics is going to do that, because unless you make security a multilateral effort, it makes the host country's expenses so high as to be almost unmanageable.
David Gartenstein Ross. We appreciate your time again. Thank you so much for My your pleasure. perspective. And we want to hear your say on the Russian bombings. Can Russia keep spectators safe during the Sochi Olympics? Share your thoughts with us on Twitter, CCTV, CCTV underscore America, on Facebook, CCTV America, and on Weibo, CCTV News. Or you can email us, your say at cctv-america.com. We will read out some of your answers on the air later in our news hour.